Hey everyone, Diavolo here, and in today's video, we are going to be going over one of, if not my favourite and most definitely flashiest arc in Kimetsu no Yaiba's story. This is the entire Entertainment District arc from the one and only Demon Slayer. But quickly, two seconds before we get into the video, if you do enjoy my content and want to watch more stuff just like this, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and also be sure to leave a like on the video, as it really helps out with the algorithm and pushes my stuff to a bunch of new amazing people. Plus, extra long videos like these take even longer to produce, so I really do appreciate it. But anyway, enough of that, let's get into the flashiest arc in all of Demon Slayer. So four months after the Mugen train incident and the passing of Rengoku, all three boys had been relentlessly training at the Butterfly Mansion and occasionally going on missions so that they could improve their strength. Tanjiro says that they're able to endure all of the training since the boys are together. Later, after completing one of his solo missions, Tanjiro approaches the Butterfly Mansion to hear the screams of the young girls inside. Inside the property, Aoi and Naho scream to be let go after the sound Hashira, Tengen Uzui, picked them up and started to take them away. While the other girls in there plea for their freedom, Aoi calls out to Kano to try and help save them. Initially hesitant on what to do, Kano makes the decision to chase after Uzui and she grabs a hold of the girls. Tengen looks at Kano and tells her to obey her orders, but when she doesn't respond to him, he becomes aggravated and starts to call her a stuck up pig. The other girls get scared by his screaming, but they all manage to muster up their courage to swarm him and stop him from kidnapping Aoi and Naho. At this point, Tanjiro enters the property, and although he initially gets confused as to what's going on, he decides to headbutt Tengen in order to free the girls. However, as he goes to make contact, Tengen escapes the headbutt, flying above them and revealing that he previously used to be a ninja. Tanjiro angrily demands that Uzui returns the girls, while Kyo and Sumi continuously assault him with names. Because of this, Tengen becomes even more riled up at their disrespect and he demands that they obey him as their superior officer. However, Tanjiro stubbornly refuses to acknowledge Tengen as his superior, causing him to explode with anger. While seething with anger, Tengen explains that he needs female corpse members in order to carry out his mission. He then states that since they aren't Tsukuko, he doesn't need to ask Shinobu for permission to take the girls. Kyo cries out that Naho isn't a corpse member, so Tengen just tosses her off the roof and decides to only take Aoi. Still not pleased with the outcome, Tanjiro demands that he gives up Aoi, and instead he will go in her place. And with almost perfect timing, Zenitsu and Inosuke arrive to help protect the girls, also offering to go on the mission in place of them. Uzui ends up giving in and whacks Aoi on the back as he returns her to the girls. As the boys set off on the mission, they ask Tengen, where exactly they are going. To which he says, the flashiest place in Japan, steeped in lust and avarice, ultimately revealing that they are heading towards the one and only Entertainment District. Before arriving outside the Entertainment District, Tengen begins instructing the trio and establishes himself as the leader of the three young demon slayers. He then specifically states his status as a god and demands that they all bow, scrape and avert their eyes. Being genuinely intrigued, Tanjiro falls for the Tengen's flamboyance and asks what it is that Uzui rules over as a so-called god. Sensing the complete absurdity of the scenario, Zenitsu concludes that Uzui is a bad sign and is left speechless by just how gullible Tanjiro truly is. Tengen explains that he is the god of festivals and upon hearing this, Inosuke loudly introduces himself as the god of the mountain, trying to imply that they are both on equal ground but this disgusts Uzui. He then instructs the group to follow him to a wisteria house. There they will discuss their plans. Then in almost an instant, he sprints off and vanishes, leaving the group to chase after him in a complete panic. Once they arrive at the wisteria house, Tengen asks the group to be on a lookout for a young lady he could marry, which infuriates Zenitsu. He angrily tells Tengen to stop screwing around and stop using members of the corpse to be his matchmakers. Tengen blows up and yells that he doesn't need a matchmaker since he's already married and that they're searching for his wives who have failed to respond to his letters. 
Zenitsu, who doesn't believe it, tells Tenken to stop spreading his fantasies, causing Tenken to angrily whack him in the face with a pile of letters. Tanjiro begins to sift through all of the letters, noticing the large quantity. He comments that she must have been a fast writer, to which Tenken clarifies that the large quantity is due to the fact that he has three wives. After hearing this, Zenitsu's head erupts and fills with rage, thinking that the Tenken is lying. He demands to know how he could possibly have three wives. Tenken gets angry at his remarks and punches Zenitsu in the stomach with such force that it renders him completely unconscious. Tanjiro begins to ask how they plan on sneaking into the district, leaving the Tengen to explain that they will be disguised. His wives, which are Kunoichi, were originally stationed there after he himself failed to find any leads as a customer. But after they narrowed down a few possible locations of where the demon might be, they lost all communication. Overhearing the situation, Inosuke bluntly asks what if his wives are already dead, to which Tengen also punches him in the stomach, knocking him unconscious as well. Within the entertainment district, a majority of the workers are individuals who were sold into the business due to poverty and debts. As a courtesan, their job is to appeal and entertain customers so they can eventually find a wealthy man who is willing to buy their freedom. The highest classification of a courtesan is an Orion, who is considered to be the most artistic, beautiful and educated and is thus only ever reserved for the wealthiest of customers. As the group finally arrives, Tengen uses his charming looks to give away the boys who were disguised as girls, and is initially successfully able to give Tanjiro away to the Tokito house. Tengen then proceeds down the street with the other two boys following behind. Inosuke and Uzui notice a courtesan procession coming towards them on the street and learn that the Orion named Konowatsu is on her way to greet a suitor. Zenitsu notices the Orion and angrily yells at Tengen, demanding to know if that's his wife as well, which ends up earning him another punch in the face. A woman approaches Tengen and asks him if he is looking for a house and offers to take Inosuke into the Ogimoto house, to which Tengen accepts. Standing there alone, Zenitsu fearfully starts to realise that he is the only one left with the Hashira. Skipping over to the Ogimoto house, where two women are clapping for joy at just how beautiful Inosuke is after removing her makeup. Due to this, they become motivated to educate him and transform him to become the most popular Orion within the district. Meanwhile, in the Kyogoku house, Zenitsu is in the middle of putting on an emotional performance with his shamisen after being abandoned by Tengen Uzui. And at the Tokito house, Tanjiro is assisting in doing household chores. The staff asks Tanjiro to carry the Orion's belongings up to her room, which he does so happily. When he arrives at the room, he discovers two young girls gossiping inside and overhears them talking about Ashinuke. Confused, Tanjiro asks what it is. The girls explain that Ashinuke is when a courtesan runs off with a customer without paying off their debts. They also mention a rumour that Suma, the most recent courtesan, had run away, which catches Tanjiro's attention. Just then, Koanatsu walks into the room and tells the girls to stop gossiping, and thanks Tanjiro for carrying up her belongings. She gives him a piece of candy to express her gratitude, and Tanjiro decides to ask her if the rumour regarding Suma was true or not. Koanatsu looks stunned by the sudden question and asks him why exactly he's asking her. Tanjiro panics and lies, telling her that Suma is his older sister. But due to Tanjiro being unable to lie, he pulls a sour face and ends up frightening all of the girls. Koanatsu again questions Tanjiro if he was sold into the house just like his sister, causing him to again uncomfortably lie that he was in fact sold and was exchanging letters with Suma. Koanatsu reluctantly tells Tanjiro that she does not believe Suma would run away. However, when they discovered her diary in her desk, she had written that she was planning on running away. She also reveals that there has been no information regarding if she has managed to escape or not. Tanjiro begins to speculate that it could be the demon that was creating the facade that Suma had run away and might possibly be responsible for implanting the diary. He then prays for her safety and promises to himself that he will find a way to help her. At a similar time in the district, Tengen is seen on the top of a roof watching the activity of the public. 
He fails to notice any unusual activity and can't help but have a bad feeling on the lack of action and proceeds to speculate that the demon must be strong due to its ability to hide its presence. Back at the Okimoto house, Inosuke is starting to investigate the whereabouts of Makio and overhears two women conversing in front of Makio's room. The woman began to gossip that Makio was feeling unwell and had not left her room for the entire day. Inosuke begins to speculate on the information and proceeds down the hall. However, he becomes infuriated at having to wear the uncomfortable kinemon during the hot weather and recalls Tengen's threats. Before the boys had separated, Tengen had threatened him not to strip down or speak due to his deep voice making it harder for Inosuke to gather information. Inside Makio's room, an ominous voice is seen questioning a woman who she was sending letters to. A large Obi-like demon is then seen holding the woman hostage. The demon calls the woman by her name, revealing the hostage to be Makio. While being held hostage by the Obi demon, Makio tries to formulate a plan to try to escape. However, the demon senses Inosuke snooping in the hallway and decides to make an escape itself. Inosuke senses the change in the atmosphere and rushes into the room. He discovers the room is destroyed and senses the demon is hiding in the ceiling. As the demon tries to escape, Inosuke begins to give chase and rushes down the hallway. As he prepares to turn down the hallway, he decides to punch a hole in the wall in order to pull the demon out. However, when he swings, a customer comes into the clearing and unknowingly gets punched into the wall. The staff look in horror as Inosuke looks around to try and find the demon, but to his frustration, he loses sight of it and blames the customer. Over at the Kyogoku house, Zenitsu calms down after his emotional performance and begins to search for Hinatsuru. Due to the fact that the staff had been mourning the manager's death, he's had trouble collecting any information on her possible whereabouts so far. So Zenitsu decides to use his advanced sense of hearing in order to listen to try and find any information on what's going on. In doing so, he overhears a girl quietly sobbing and rushes to try and find her. When he arrives, he discovers the room is completely destroyed and the girl is disheveled in the middle of it. He approaches her, but she begins to sob again, causing Zenitsu to frantically try to comfort her. As he's kneeling on the ground, Zenitsu suddenly gets chills and senses something approach from behind him. The Orion of the house, Warabahime, glares down at him and coldly demands what business he has in her room. Without turning around, Zenitsu recognizes the sound that she is giving off is not human and realizes that she is the demon that the four slayers have been searching for. Warabahime angrily repeats her question after Zenitsu fails to respond, and the other girls of the house explain that Zenitsu is new to the house. Zenitsu attempts to apologize and explain that he was checking on the girl, but this angers Warabahime, who rudely calls Zenitsu ugly and creepy, leaving him shocked. Warabahime looks around to see that the room is still in a mess and pulls the girl who was crying by the ear, causing her to yell in pain. The girl apologizes for failing to clean the room, but Warabahime continues to harm the girl, causing her to yell out in agony. Unable to put up with the abuse, Zenitsu grabs Warabahime by the arm, demanding that she let go of the girl. Skipping back two nights before the Demon Slayers arrived at the Entertainment District, the manager of the Kyogoku house, Omitsu, holds a meeting with the Orion of her household. She explains to Warabahime that she has to restrain herself from bullying the other courtesans of the house, to which Warabahime feigns her innocence. Omitsu expresses her frustration at having ignored her behavior, explaining that she has gone too far, but Warabahime guilts her by mentioning that she brings money into the household. Omitsu becomes nervous as she mentions a tale she heard from an elder when she was just a child. She explains that the elder had recalled a courtesan who was extremely beautiful but had a rotten personality. The courtesan was the Orion of their household and had been around since the elder was a child and was eerily similar to the Orion the elder saw when she was an adult. Coincidentally, the Orion's names both ended in Hime and had a nasty glare when they were both displeased. As Omitsu continues talking, she notices the similarities between the elder's description and Watabahime. However, before she questions the fidelity of her race, Watabahime transforms into her original appearance as Daki and pulls Omitsu from the house. 
as they fly up into the night sky, Darky eerily remarks that the people around her had managed to survive by remaining silent on the atrocities that they've witnessed until tonight. Omitsu fearfully brandishes a knife revealing her intention to kill Darky. However, she berates Omitsu for being more stupid than she believed and bids her goodbye, dropping her to her death. Darky nonchalantly lands on a nearby rooftop and struts away as the citizens discover Omitsu dead on the ground. When she returns to her room, Darky discovers Muzan awaiting and humbly greets him. Muzan comments on her appearance and speculates that she's eaten a large amount of humans. He proudly congratulates her and cautions her to not act recklessly. Darky complies and receives information regarding the possible arrival of the Demon Slayers. She is encouraged by Muzan to become even stronger and crueler than she was before. The flashback ends and rolls into the situation with Zenitsu confronting Watabahime. She becomes angry and slams him into the wall, rendering him completely unconscious. She openly voices her disgust and demands that he never touch her again and also scarily remarks that she will administer harsher discipline. The commotion causes Amitsu's husband to rush over and apologize for Zenko's actions. He begs her to forgive him as they prepare for the customers. Suddenly, Watabahime has a sudden change of character and apologizes to the manager while he quickly orders for her room to be cleaned. As Watabahime leaves the room, she has her doubts about Zenitsu and realizes that he isn't any ordinary human and might actually be a member of the Demon Slayers. In her cleaned room, she can be seen ominously laughing to herself as she openly welcomes the idea of Demon Slayers arriving in the district, promising she'll eat all of them. Outside, Tanjiro waits, looking into the night sky, feeling uneasy, as he comments on the dark and musky smell that has taken the town. With the manager being informed of Zenko's sudden disappearance from the Kyogoku house, the staff member explains to him that she had disappeared after being left to rest in her room. However, the mention of Zenko angers the manager and he tells the staff member to forget all about Zenko. The manager chases her out before expressing his frustration at having to submit to Watabahime's desires. Elsewhere, on the rooftop, Inosuke can be seen explaining the demon he saw in the Ogimoto house to Tanjiro. His exotic description and excitement worries Tanjiro and he tells him to calm down until Tengen and Zenitsu arrive for the meeting. Tengen stealthily and flashily arrives undetected and proclaims that Zenitsu will not be arriving. He also mentions that he might have put the boys in immediate danger. Tenken tells Inosuke and Tanjiro that they must leave the district before the upper rank demon makes their move and announces that he will be continuing the mission alone. Tanjiro tries to argue against this decision. However, Tenken quickly leaves as fast as he arrived. Tanjiro begins to wonder if they aren't trustworthy due to being members of the lowest demon slayer rank. But Inosuke interrupts to inform him that they've climbed the ranks a fair bit and he flexes his hand out and shows Tanjiro the Kano rank which appears and tells them their status in the ranking. Confused about the revelation, Inosuke explains to Tanjiro that following the final selections their hands were marked with the wisteria flower engraving. Tanjiro is left slightly embarrassed and not knowing how to check but Inosuke promptly tells him to cheer up. Tanjiro gets back on track and tells Inosuke that he will meet with him outside the Ogimoto house once night falls, claiming that he wants to finish investigating the Tokito house before he leaves, which angers Inosuke. He pinches Tanjiro by the cheek and tells him to follow him at that moment, but Tanjiro explains that there might be a secret passage beneath the household that might lead to the demon. He tells Inosuke that he thinks the Tengen's wives are still alive as well as Zenitsu, and he asks him to comply in order to save them successfully. Inosuke smiles and lets Tanjiro know that he was thinking the exact same thing and agrees to the plan. Back at the Tokiso house, Kuanatsu has finished with her preparations and is visited by Tanjiro. He arrives without his disguise and informs Kuanatsu that he is leaving the house and asks her to pass on his payment for his meals he's had. She asks why he's dressed that way and Tanjiro explains that he's actually a boy while apologizing to her. But to her, this was no surprise as she claims that she knew all along and wondered what he was up to. He tells her that he hopes to save the individuals who have disappeared from the house. 
and she expresses her relief while also saying that she'll be leaving as well. They wish each other well and say their goodbyes before Tanjiro leaves the room. But when Koenatsu hears a sound, she turns around to discover Daki standing right behind her. As Tanjiro hurries off, he catches the faint smell of the upper rank demon. At the Okamoto house, Inosuke can be seen complaining as he waits for Tanjiro to arrive. Since their time to meet was long overdue, Onosuke became fed up and decides to begin the mission alone. He jumps with such force that he bursts through the ceiling and calls for the mice to bring his swords. These mice are Tengen servants who had been especially trained to act on missions. As Onosuke begins to change and make his leave, a member of the staff can be seen with a horrified expression as she sees Onosuke with a boar's mask. Over at the Kyogoku house, Omitsu's husband is seen holding a kimono in his hand. In just moments, Tengen appears in the room and holds a kunai to his throat, demanding to know the whereabouts of Hinatsuru and Zenko. The man quickly reveals that Zenko had suddenly disappeared and that Hinatsuru was sick, therefore she went to a low-end brothel. Tengen questions the man further and asks who he thinks is responsible for causing the trouble within the house. However, the man begins to hyperventilate, but Tengen reassures him that he can be trusted and he will exact revenge on the individual responsible. The man envisions his deceased wife and informs Tengen that it's Watabahime who's causing the problems. He also informs him that she has the north room where the sunlight never falls. The man stops talking for a moment and quickly turns around, however, by that point, Tengen had already left. The man is left alone in the room, holding his wife's bloody kimono. When the Tengen arrives to Watabahime's room, he discovers that the demon is not there and she is probably out hunting. He quickly leaves to search for Hinatsuru and swears that he will return to defeat the demon with his own hands. Elsewhere, Tanjiro has discovered Daki within Koenatsu's room as she attempts to kidnap her within her obi. Daki informs Tanjiro that she will not be eating him since he is dirty and old meaning that only a Hashira will suffice her appetite. Tanjiro yells at her to release Koenatsu. However, his demands irritate Daki as she lashes out, throwing him from the building. Tanjiro is left stunned from her immense speed and power, but he manages to regain his composure and stands back up on his feet. He begins to analyze the situation and realizes that her obi has a special power that can swallow people whole. At that moment, Daki climbs out of the window and is amazed that Tanjiro is still alive. Tanjiro apologizes to Nezuko after realizing that one of the shoulder straps is broken on the box. He tells her that he has to leave her here for now and warns her not to come out of the box unless her life is in utter danger. He initiates his attack against Daki by using his water breathing fourth form, striking tide turbulent to attempt to slash at her obi. He successfully manages to perform an aerial attack against Daki and slices the end of the obi that was holding Koenatsu captive. Daki states that Tanjiro is cute, but he makes her sick and compares him to a dying rat before saying that she likes him as well. After arriving at one of the Kiremise houses, Tengen is seen caring for his wife, Hinatsuru. She tells him to leave her to go investigate the loud sounds that were heard within the district. But before he can do so, she apologizes to him for failing to complete the mission. When she initially arrived at Yoshiwara, Hinatsuru was placed in the Kyogoku house to investigate. She realized that Watabahime was the demon but could not make any hasty decisions. In an attempt to escape and avoid suspicion, Hinatsuru drank poison and pretended to fall ill. However, she was gifted an obi by the Orient to spy on her and ultimately kill her if she did anything suspicious. Tengen comforts Hinatsuru and tells her she did well during the mission, revealing the defeated obi in the background. He advises her to leave the district as soon as the antidote takes effect, to which she agrees as they embrace. As Tengen leaves the house and heads back towards the battlefield, he tries to listen for the sounds of the demon and hears the vibration coming through an underground cavern. He pulls out his blades and uses his sound breathing first form roar to slam onto the ground causing a large explosion which can be heard by Daki in the distance. She questions Tanjiro as to how many demon slayers are in the district but he refuses to tell her. She tries to strike a deal with him that if he answers her question she will spare him while simultaneously trying to intimidate him. 
He begins to discredit his ability to perform the water breathing compared to Sakonji and Giyu. But Tanjiro mentions that he needs to rely on the Hinokami Kagura in order to land powerful blows, but he lacks the ability to perform multiple strikes with it. Tanjiro tries to regain his focus and encourages himself that all of his training should pay off. He mentally envisions Kyojuro's voice telling him to keep his heart burning and manages to perform the Hinokami Kagura Raging Sun to block Daki's Obi. Daki notices the change in his fighting style as Tanjiro cuts off a large section of her Obi. As she tries to analyze this change, Tanjiro suddenly bursts towards her. He swings his blade down using Hinokami Kagura Flame Dance to try and decapitate her, but she narrowly avoids it. As Tanjiro tries to attack her again, Daki gains the upper hand and tries to decapitate Tanjiro with her Obi. However, Tanjiro utilizes another Hinokami Kagura Fake Rainbow to escape. Daki is left confused, trying to locate where Tanjiro has disappeared to, but within seconds, Tanjiro appears behind her and uses Hinokami Kagura Fire Wheel to attack her once again. Tanjiro's blade makes contact with the neck of Daki, but Daki manages to quickly deflect Tanjiro's attack and sends him flying into the ground. He tries to continue his attack, however, he is left exhausted from his use of Hinokami Kagura and has trouble getting up. As Daki quickly approaches, Tanjiro manages to use the recovery breathing technique to overcome his technique and narrowly avoids Daki's attack. Tanjiro goes on the offensive and attacks Daki, however, her obi gets in the way preventing him from defeating her, leaving him with no choice but to raise his body temperature even higher. Tanjiro recalls an interaction he had with Kyo at the Butterfly Mansion. She begins to worry over Tanjiro's uncontrollable fever and tells him that she needs to inform Shinobu. Tanjiro tries to reassure her that he's fine and not to tell Shinobu. However, Kyo mentions that his fever has been at 100.4 degrees for over several days now and it could mean that something is terribly wrong. He confesses to her that he has been training with the Hinokami Kagura in order to improve his skills and begs her to hold on a bit before reporting to the Shinobu. Kyo reluctantly agrees but tells him that she will only wait for a bit. Back in the battle against Daki, Tanjiro begins to gasp as the Hinokami Kagura begins to take a toll on his body, but he refuses to let up in order to protect the people in the district. He uses his determination to promise that he won't allow Daki to take another life and cause the people to go through the sadness he and his comrades had to experience. His breath fumes out from his mouth as he prepares to attack Daki yet again. Flashing back to earlier at the Ogimoto house, a member of staff frantically approaches the other woman as she claims to have seen a monster. The other woman are left confused at the woman's unusual claims as she explains that she saw a boar monster destroying the ceiling and the floor. Elsewhere in the house, Inosuke can be seen cackling as he discovers a hole leading to the demon's nest. He proudly yells at the hole to prepare itself before trying to dive in head first. After realizing that only his head fits, he takes it as a challenge and begins to snap his body, claiming that he can dislocate all joints of his entire body, all the while frightening the life out of the staff that seem to be observing him while he's doing this. He manages to somehow slither through the opening and travels down through the tunnel until he reaches a main cavern area. Once he arrives, he discovers long trails of the obi draped throughout the entire cavern. As he takes a closer look, he can see multiple people being held captive within the obi and discovers Zenitsu knocked out among them as well. Inosuke becomes disgusted with the worm-like obi and begins his assault against the obi by slicing sections of it off while simultaneously assaulting it with words. The women who were held captive begin to slip out from these sections, causing the obi to panic at the situation around it. The Obi analyzes Inosuke's natural abilities and has trouble formulating a plan. However, Daki's consciousness takes control as she orders the Obi to capture him alive. As Inosuke prepares to slice another section of the Obi, it suddenly becomes more elastic and folds along Inosuke's blade. Before the Obi can attack him though, Inosuke gains the upper hand by maneuvering to perform Beast Breathing Sixth Fang Palisade Bite. However, the Obi manages to distract him. The Obi mentions Inosuke's failure at protecting the individuals he's freed, claiming that it can just easily swallow them all up whole again. 
and proceeds to move towards the unconscious individuals. However, a kune flies out of nowhere, causing the obi to react. Two women appear holding kunai and agree with Inosuke's description of the worm-like obi and begin to attack it. They explain to Inosuke that they're there to help him and will protect the others from the obi. Inosuke reluctantly agrees, but then he asks them who they are, to which they reveal that they're the Tengen's missing wives, Suma and Makio. Makio begins to scold Suma, who sulks after revealing that she was the first one who was captured. She also begins to cry as she realises that they can't help everyone and are most likely going to die. The Obi seems pleased by Suma's pessimistic attitude and questions who should get eaten first. But before it can get the chance to attack, Zenitsu quickly attacks the Obi. Amazed by his skill, Inosuke comments that he probably shouldn't wake Zenitsu up and Suma and Makio question this man's identity. The Obi is left amazed by Zenitsu's speed but tries to understand the sounds it heard. It specifically mentions that there were two sounds like thunder. One came from Zenitsu, but when the Obi finally recognises the source of the second sound, the ceiling explodes and breaks down. Suma looks up into the distance and a silhouette can be seen from the individual who's dropped down into the hole. Tengen brandishes his blades as he takes a deep breath and within seconds slashes the Obi within his vicinity. Makio turns around and calls out to Tengen who apologises for taking too long. He then promises that things are about to get real flashy. Going back to Makio as a young adult, she lived the lifestyle of a kunoichi and was often taught to survive instead of trying to accomplish the mission. These ideals were again reiterated into her mindset when she married Tengen, who would tell his wives to always prioritise their lives and return to him. He would make sure to let them know that he would take responsibility to protect the public after protecting them. Makio would often question if his morals were right or not, however, Hinatsuru would reassure her that wanting to live was not immoral. Back in the cavern, Tengen greets his wives by patting them on the head and compliments that they've put in great work. Inosuke calls out to the god of festivals and gets mad at him for allowing the obi to escape, but Tengen loses his temper and defends his wives saying that they saved the people that were trapped. Makio interrupts him to say that they need to leave immediately before things get worse. He then quickly instructs everyone to follow him. Now up on the rooftop, Tengen sprints towards the battlefield and Inosuke and Zenitsu struggle to catch up with him. In the middle of the battle between Daki and Tanjiro, the Obi comes flying and unexpectedly enters Daki's body. Tanjiro realises that the Obi is entering Daki's main body and tries to attack her, but she quickly disappears. She then reappears on a nearby rooftop as her hair turns white. She squeals with delight as she learns there's a Hashira within the district. At that moment, a bystander discovers Tanjiro acting suspiciously on the street and tells him to stop fighting in front of his shop. Daki overhears the man and becomes enraged by his comment. She lashes out a flurry of attacks on the buildings around her and ends up cutting off the man's arm in the process. She also manages to kill other bystanders in nearby houses, destroying them all as well. Tanjiro sees the bloodshed nearby and tells the man to tie a tourniquet around his arm despite bleeding heavily himself. Daki begins to walk away after destroying the houses, but Tanjiro tells her that he will not allow her to get away with this. Daki cockingly tells him to stop speaking to her since an ugly human's life has no value and he is just another rotten corpse. Hearing this and seeing the damage that she has caused around him, Tanjiro's heart begins to beat louder and louder and his eyes start to fill with rage. Tanjiro recalls a letter that was addressed to him by Shinjuro Rengoku, who admits that he wronged him. In the letter, he thanks him for mourning Kyojuro's death, as well as for befriending Senjuro, and proceeds to express his embarrassment for his behaviour when they first met. He explained that he was wallowing in sorrow over the death of his wife and incompetence as a Hashira that he turned to alcohol. Despite his lack of presence as a father, Kyojuro had proved himself to be a better son. He was managing to become a Hashira, even though Shinjuro had refused to continue teaching him. Shinjuro writes in his letters that Tanjiro is gifted with a power and is destined for greatness, as seen from the Demon Slayer mark he was born with. However, Tanjiro clarifies that Shinjuro is wrong because he wasn't born with the mark. 
He recalls getting the mark when he was protecting his younger brother from a falling brazier, and then it changed in appearance during the final selection. Unlike his father, who was born with the mark, Tanjiro simply acquired it, meaning he wasn't a chosen one. Nonetheless, he refuses to back down. Back in the fight, as Daki walks away from Tanjiro, he quickly grabs her and narrowly tries to cut her neck, but she manages to avoid the attack and move away from him. She loses her foot in the process, but her regeneration skills allow her to develop a new one within seconds. Tanjiro notices her regeneration and asks Daki why she steals people's lives and ruins them. His tone of voice comes off as familiar to Daki as she envisions a different swordsman before her. Although she doesn't recognize the swordsman, Daki realizes that she's envisioning Muzan's memories. Tanjiro continues to question her, reasoning, and taunts her with the fact that she was once a human who endured hardships as well. Daki proceeds to glorify the privileges of being a demon, seemingly mocking the circumstances that humans face. Her confidence grows as Daki believes that she is now untouchable due to the fact that she has returned back to her original form. She bids Tanjiro farewell and begins to think about going after the Hashira. However, Tanjiro utilizes the Hinokami Kagura Burning Bones Summer Sun to burn the Obi blocking his path. Daki is left stunned by her wounds and inability to regenerate to the point where she begins to shake and is left to defend herself from Tanjiro's flurry of attacks. He closes in and swings his blade to decapitate her, but she continues to resist as her neck transforms into an obi refusing to be cut. Tanjiro's blade begins struggling as it tries to cut through Daki's obi-like neck. The resisting cloth forces Tanjiro to abandon his attack and escape before Daki has the chance to fight back. However, when he tries to recollect his thoughts, Daki charges towards him and tries to slash him. Tanjiro analyzes her movements and has realized that he can see her in slow motion, giving him the advantage. As her wild obi attacks him from multiple directions, Tanjiro manages to pin them all in a single spot and proceeds to charge at her while cutting away the obi. His flames burn the obi away within seconds as he comes to a close proximity to Daki. However, just when he's about to decapitate her, Tanjiro envisions his sister, Hanako, desperately begging his brother to breathe. In that moment, Tanjiro loses his focus and begins gasping for air after nearly passing his physical limitations. He collapses onto the ground, finally feeling the pain that he has been suppressing, and his eyes begin to bleed. It is revealed that he has been acting on hunger and has been using his life force to surpass his limitations. However, his sister was able to warn him before he could sustain any life-threatening damage. Daki glares down at Tanjiro and berates him for his weaknesses as a human. She mocks his injuries and slowly approaches him to deliver the final blow. Before she can deliver the attack, a leg comes down and kicks Daki behind, rupturing her head. Nesuko can be seen boiling with rage as she stands between Tanjiro, who's struggling to breathe on the ground, and Daki. Nesuko recalls the memories of when her family was slaughtered on that snowy night, and her rage grows stronger as she prepares to fight the upper rank demon. Daki's head and face begin to regenerate as she glares holes into Nesuko. She recognizes her as the demon Muzan specifically had told her about. Nezuko's face begins to transform as her infinite anger begins to push her forward, leaving everyone wondering what would happen in Nezuko's case as she also gained the ability to have no physical limitations. Flashing back to just before when Muzan arrived at the Kyogoku house to see Daki, there he had told her to find the demon who had escaped his grasp just like Tamiyo. He identifies her as having a hemp-like pattern kimono as well as a checkerboard obi, and tells Daki that she is his last hope to catch Nezuko. Flashing forward, now in the present, Daki promises that she will kill Nezuko and lay her down at Muzan's feet as proof of this. Nezuko faces Daki and charges to once again try to kick off Daki's head, however, Daki is able to cut off Nezuko's leg using her obi. While Nezuko looks down at her bleeding thigh, Daki uses the opportunity to knock her off the roof and blast her into a nearby building. As the two demons are fighting, Tanjiro falls unconscious and envisions his brother Takio. In his dream, Takio mentions how Tanjiro and Nezuko are very alike when they're kind and angry, and goes on to recall an instance when he saw Nezuko get angry. 
He explains how fearful he was when he saw her and was worried about her lack of concern for herself, mentioning that within an instant, she could have lost everything that she holds dear. Back in the fight, Darkie jumps down from the rooftop and approaches Nezuko, who's trapped underneath a pile of rubble. She mocks her for being weak and a half-developed demon. Darkie continues to provoke her and cockingly says that she will not fight Nezuko anymore and will simply leave her trapped and expose her to the sunlight instead. However, before Darkie can say anything else, Nezuko comes out from the rubble and regenerates her leg in an instant leaving Daki stunned at her abilities. Nezuko proceeds to instantaneously regenerate her arm, which was cut off as well, leaving Daki uneasy as she realises that her regenerative abilities are on par with an upper rank demon. Nezuko's body transforms as she breaks her bamboo muzzle, and a horn grows out the right side of her forehead, and her body also becomes covered in ivy-like demon crests. Daki gets more intimidated by Nezuko's change in aura as she tries to defend herself from one of her kicks, stressfully cutting it off with her obi. However, before she can cut Nezuko's head, Daki is smashed to the ground by Nezuko's kick. Daki is left shocked as Nezuko's leg pierces through her body, pinning her onto the ground. She tries to make sense of how Nezuko could attack her with the leg she had just sliced off but then realises that Nezuko had instantly regenerated the leg within that moment, admitting that Nezuko's regenerative abilities are greater than her own. Nezuko begins to become manic following her transformation. As Tanjiro still remains in his unconscious state, Taikyo desperately taps him on his back, begging for him to help. He tells Tanjiro to please wake up and help Nezuko, who isn't acting like herself anymore, forcing Tanjiro to awake with concern. As this happens, Daki remains pinned on the ground, and she tries to use her obi to free herself from Nezuko's hold. Her obi effectively severs multiple limbs from Nezuko's body, but before she gets the chance to scoop them up, Nezuko's severed hands grip onto her obi. Her limbs remain connected by her unusually solidified blood, with some of the blood falling onto Daki. In an instant, Daki is set on fire by the blood, causing her to scream out in agony. Nezuko's limbs wind back to reattach to her body and they self cauterize each cut. She proceeds to forcefully stomp down on Daki's head, causing it to erupt in flames. Nezuko continues to stomp multiple times on her head before she forcefully kicks Daki through a nearby building and into one behind it. As she follows Daki to continue her assault, Nezuko comes across an injured woman who stares at Nezuko with fear as she tends to her bleeding wound. Nezuko falls into a trance and charges into the home towards the woman, as she fails to suppress her hunger for blood. Out of nowhere though, Tanjiro jumps on top of Nezuko and uses his blade to act as a muzzle in order to restrain her. He yells at her to fight the hunger and encourages her to be strong, but she lashes out at him and scratches him on the face, trying to escape. He apologizes to her for making her fight after smelling the blood that spilled from her injuries. He proceeds to reassure her that her big brother is now there to protect her and that she can now heal herself. Nezuko manages to regain her footing and she jumps through the ceiling with Tanjiro on her back, causing an intense amount of damage to happen to the building. As Tanjiro struggles to restrain his sister, the walls of the room are seemingly slashed as Daki barges into the room with her burned face. She is seen seething with anger as she is forced to regenerate her burned body and angrily approaches the siblings. Tanjiro becomes conflicted on what to do as he realises that there are bystanders he needs to protect but he also needs to defend Daki's attacks without releasing Nezuko. As Tanjiro makes his decision to protect the public, Tengen Uzui suddenly appears before him and expresses his surprise at Nezuko's flashy demonization. Tengen goes on to comically berate Tanjiro for speaking highly of Nezuko's ability to restrain herself back at the Ubiyashiki estate, despite him struggling to restrain her now. Daki sees Tengen and excitedly reacts to a Hashira arriving before her, but is quickly and chillingly told to shut up. Tengen tells her to scram and says that she is too weak to be an upper rank demon. All of a sudden, Daki's head which had just been decapitated as Tengen flew past, fell into her lap, leaving her completely stunned and simply confused at what had just transpired. Tanjiro was left shocked by Tengen's swift victory over Daki, 
but the sound Hashira reminds him that the fight isn't over as his sister is still out of control. Tanjiro struggles to restrain her, with Tengen suggesting to sing her a lullaby to put her to sleep. But at that moment, Nezuko regains her footing and jumps out of another building window, taking her brother with her again as they continue the struggle. Realising his words aren't reaching her, Tanjiro asks his mother, in a dreamlike state, what he should do. He then remembers Tengen's earlier advice to sing Nezuko a lullaby. He begins to sing her a song that their mother had sung in the past, and over a short period of time, his lullaby soon reaches her. Nezuko remembers asking their mother about the song when she was a child, causing her to break down in tears. Nezuko comes to her senses and changes from her advanced demonized form into her regular childlike state, promptly falling asleep. Tanjiro lets out a relieved sigh as he successfully holds Nezuko in his lap. Back in the house, Daki screams at Tengen for cutting her head off, and he responds by telling her to die quietly. The enraged demon reminds him that he had denied her upper rank status, which he affirms, but she proceeds to insist her status, much to his annoyance. To the Hashira's astonishment, Daki begins to throw a tantrum and cry, and he notes that she's been taking far too long for when she should have been showing signs of dying by now. Still throwing her tantrum, Daki calls out to Guataru to save her, and a male demon begins to emerge from her body. Tengen senses the danger and attempts to immediately attack the two, but his blades hit nothing but air as the demon disappears from his sight. Tengen wonders why Daki is still alive after being beheaded, as well as the presence of the new demon, who he comments as having a great reaction speed. Gyotaro tells Daki to heal her burn, complimenting her good looks, and he then wounds Tengen when he attempts to try and attack them again. Gyotaro compliments Tengen's attempt to attack him as well as his success at blocking his attack. He reveals that he was intending to kill Tengen with that attack and prepares to take him on in a battle. Within the entertainment district, there are men known as goos, or barkers, who work to attract customers to enter the brothels. Gyotaro worked as one of these men, and eventually named himself using the word Gu. Inside one of the brothels, Gyotaro and Tengen are about to engage in combat, but before they do so, Gyotaro begins to analyse Tengen's appearance. He comments about his nice face, good skin, and height, mentioning that he must attract a lot of attention from women. Gyotaro begins to creepily scratch at his face until he begins to bleed, and voices his jealousy over Tengen's looks. In the corner of the room, Daki can be seen crying as she whines at Guataro to kill the other demon slayers who burned her as well. She proceeds to tell him that they ganged up on her and she tried her hardest to kill them, causing Guataro to seethe with anger. Using two large sickles, he creates a flurry of large arc-like slashes aiming them towards Tengen. Tanjiro can be seen carrying Nezuko as he rushes to put her to safety. He looks up into the sky and sees the sickles return back in the direction that they came, like a boomerang. He becomes concerned when he smells Tengen's blood and rushes to return to help. At that moment, Inosuke and Zenitsu can be seen flinging towards Tanjiro as they awkwardly announce their arrival. Tanjiro quickly informs them to help Tengen, and Inosuke ensures him that he's going to be real flashy, before quickly leaving Tanjiro to put Nezuko in her box. Back at the parlour, Guataro seethes with jealousy after witnessing how cool Tengen looks by protecting the bystanders within the home, causing him to brag about his appearance and marriage to the three women. Guataro pauses in astonishment before furiously scratching his face after hearing Tengen's polygamy. He proceeds to use his blood demon art, Flying Blood Sickle, to try and kill the Hashira, but Tengen manages to block it. A large explosion causes the floor beneath Tengen to give in, and he manages to escape by dropping down one floor. However, Guataro commands his sickles to turn, and they come straight for Tengen yet again. By this point, Tengen had realised Guataro's abilities to change the sickles in the directions that he wants, and tries to formulate a plan on how he will try and defeat these siblings. He theorises that in order to kill the demons, he would need to cut off Guataro's head instead of Daki's head, and tries to test it out. Tengen grabs three small balls and throws them into the air. He proceeds to aim for them and precisely hits them to cause an explosion within the brothel. As the brothel begins to crumble, Tengen is seen standing on the rubble as he admits it won't be easy to defeat the demons. 
He looks at the large Obi ball before him and the siblings emerge unscathed as they confidently proclaim that they fight as one. After successfully finding the box and placing Nezuko inside, Tanjiro quickly tries to return to the battlefield in order to assist Uzui. While this happens, at the battlefield, Gurotaro scowls as he mentions Tengen's supreme abilities, calling him different and talented compared to the other Hashira he's killed. His comments somewhat irritate Tenken, and he berates him for thinking that he's talented compared to the other people on the planet, calling him ignorant. He grows more and more angry as he recalls the people that he's lost over the years despite being called the Chosen One by Guotaro. After listening to him speak, Guotaro grows irritated by the fact that he has not died yet, revealing that his poison drenched sickle should have killed him by now. Tengen explains that he is a built up resistance to poison as he was raised in a shinobi household with 9 siblings. But by the age of 15, 7 of them had already died. His father was a cold heartless individual who would regularly force them to undergo intense training and as a result, his brother adopted the same ruthlessness and cold hearted personality. Unable to understand that type of mindset, Tenken left his clan alongside his wives and approached Kagaya Yubashiki to become members of the corpse. Kagaya had warned them it would be hard to reject the values they were raised in, but openly welcomed them and thanked Tengen's family for deciding to put their lives at the risk to protect others. In the present, Guotaro notices the deterioration in Tengen's physical state and becomes gleeful when he realises that his poison is slowly taking effect. Tengen proceeds to refute his claims, saying that he is still in pristine condition and charges forward to attack the siblings. As they engage in a battle, Tengen manages to kick Daki away from Guotaro and releases numerous dark bees which cause a cluster of explosions. By setting a distraction, Tengen attempts to decapitate Guotaro while only holding the tip of the end of one of his blades, but it is promptly blocked by the demon. As both sides reassess the situation, Darkie is left whining as she pathetically reattaches her head to her body once again. Guotaro comforts Tengen about discovering the method on how to defeat them, but he feigns his innocence pretending not to notice. Despite Tengen's discovery, Guotaro cockingly says that despite knowing their weakness, Tengen will still die from the poisoning since the demons have the advantage in battle. At that moment, Zenitsu and Inosuke arrive to question the validity of Guotaro's claim that they are going to win. The two boys flamboyantly announce their arrival to the fight which confuses everyone at that moment. But then Tanjiro drops down from the ceiling above them and stands between the injured Tengen and the demons preparing to fight. Makio and Suma can be seen frantically trying to evacuate the citizens of the district as the battle resumes against the demons. Gyotaro tries to discourage the three new arrivals and manages to intimidate Tanjiro. However, Tengen Uzui comes up behind them and proudly announces that they are going to win. As Daki finishes reattaching her head, she loudly doubts his words by saying that they can't win since the Hashira has been poisoned. Unfazed, Tengen once again proudly announces their intent to win and speaks highly of the three boys. Looking back at him, Tanjiro sees the persona of Kyojuro Rengoku emitting from Tengen as he speaks, which excites Inosuke. Guotaro and Daki get riled up and reveal that they've eaten 15 and 7 Hashira respectively, and begin to attack the group. As Daki attempts to attack Tengen and Tanjiro from behind, Zenitsu bursts through the home within seconds to block the attack and Inosuke follows up. Now on the rooftop, Daki finally recognises Zenitsu from the Kyogoku house and he demandingly commands her to apologise to the girl whom he had found crying earlier. She mocks his speech by revealing that the women are treated like merchandise within the district and as the Orion, she was allowed to do as she pleased with the other people since she was the main breadwinner of the house. When she looks up at Zenitsu, a third eye appears on Daki's forehead, revealing that Guotaro can see them via her eye now. Back at the brothel, Tanjiro becomes intimidated by Guotaro's evil aura, but formulates a plan to counteract his attacks and protect Tengen. However, the demon manages to rush towards Tanjiro within an instant and catch him off guard, narrowly piercing him through his jaw. Before he can do so, Tengen grabs a hold of Tanjiro by the nape of his clothes and throws him to safety, before engaging in the battle with Guotaro. As he crash lands and looks back to see the two fighting, Tanjiro senses an ominous object approaching them from above, and Daki's obi can be seen crashing down on all around them. 
On the rooftop, Daki can be heard cackling as she admits she is now displaying her full strength since Guotado is awake and allowing her to use his advanced senses. Zenitsu and Inosuke can be seen covered in cuts and wounds as they prepare to engage with Daki in battle. Guotado disregards the claims that Tenken made earlier of the boys being Tsuguko and tries to undermine their capabilities as swordmen. The four demon slayers can be seen engaging in battle with the two demons of the entertainment district, fighting ferociously on the rooftop and inside one of the brothels. As the building begins to collapse, Tengen Uzui finds himself getting cornered between two of Guataro's attacks. However, Tanjiro jumps in and manages to protect him from the slashes. Tengen proceeds to use sound breathing fifth form string performance to try to corner Guataro, but Daki's Obi interferes and protects her brother from the attacks. Tengen begins to be pushed back by the Obi. However, Tanjiro moves in to cut the Obi and tries to distract Guataro. The Hashira is left amazed at Tanjiro's endurance despite suffering a serious shoulder wound and realises that Tanjiro had tied his sword to his hand to prevent him from dropping it due to his exhaustion. Meanwhile on the rooftop, Zenitsu and Inosuke can be seen struggling as they try to evade the attacks from Daki's Obi. The boys realise that Daki is now attacking them with the blood blades used by Guotaro, making it impossible for them to approach her. Now that the brothel has been destroyed, Tengen and Tanjiro are left to fight Guotaro and the Obi beneath the night sky. On a nearby rooftop, Hinatsuru appears carrying a large box filled with kunai darts and proceeds to launch dozens of them down below on Guotaro. At first, he is left confused by the random attack, but then Guotaro uses his blood demon art, Rampant Art Rampage, to deflect them all away from him. Guotaro is left shocked though when Tengen proceeds to attack him despite getting pierced with the darts. He attempts to decapitate him with his sickle, however Tengen manages to evade his attacks and successfully cuts off his leg. At that moment, Guotaro is struck on the neck by one of the kunai darts and fails to regenerate his leg, realising that the darts were coated with a wisteria extract. As his body begins to go numb, Tanjiro closes in on him to try to decapitate Guotaro, leaving him seething with curiosity as the demon slayers quickly gain the upper hand. The kunai darts which were utilised by Hinatsuru were revealed to be coated in a poison which would generally paralyse a demon for half a day, or possibly even immobilise a lower ranked demon. She can be seen on a nearby rooftop pleading for the poison to work for even just a moment as the demon slayers attempt to decapitate Guotaro. However, at that moment, Guotaro manages to regenerate his legs and proceeds to attack them at a close vicinity. He uses his blood demon art, rotating circular slashes, flying blood scythes to emit numerous blood slashes to attack them. Before they can reach him, Uzui grabs a hold of Tanjiro again and throws him back to protect him from the attack. Within milliseconds, Tengen uses his sound breathing form, constant resounding slashes to defect Guotaro's attack but finds that he has disappeared from his sight. To his horror, he looks up to the roof to see that Guotaro has managed to capture Hinatsuru and is about to kill her. Tengen tries to save her, however, Daki's Obi blocks him from reaching her. Tengen yells at Guotaro to stop as he tries to push through. Tanjiro comes close to the building and tries to use his Hinokami Kagura to reach her, however, his body refuses to listen to him. Tanjiro quickly changes tactics and uses a form of water breathing to quickly save Hinatsuru from Gyotoro. Realizing that he managed to save Hinatsuru, Tanjiro decides to utilize both water breathing as well as the Hinokami Kagura in order to increase his attacking power. Guotaro is left surprised by Tanjiro's unexpected maneuvers and chases at him. At that moment, Tengen comes behind Guotaro and swings his blade at Guotaro's neck while openly yelling that he owes Tanjiro. Nearby on a rooftop, Inosuke can see Tengen move in as he attempts to cut off Guotaro's head. His frustration grows as they continue to evade Daki's attacks instead of move in to try and decapitate her. Zenitsu calls out to Inosuke and explains that in order to defeat them, they need to make sure that their heads aren't connected instead of trying to decapitate the two simultaneously. Inosuke stunned looks at Zenitsu absolutely amazed and calls him awesome after seeing the difference in his personality compared to his usual demeanour. Meanwhile, Tanjiro assists Tengen by also trying to swing his blade down on Guotaro's neck. However, the demon manages to use his sickles to halt both of their attacks and attempts to absorb their blades. 
Tengen uses his free arm to use his second blade to pierce Guataro, but his quick reflexes allow him to catch the tip of the blade in his mouth. Sensing that Guataro is about to unleash more blood blades, Tengen tells Tanjiro to hang in there as Hinatsuru yanks Tanjiro away from them, allowing Tengen to leap off the roof while pulling the demon with him. Before he can leap down to hell, a voice can be heard telling them to watch out as Inosuke and Zenitsu crash onto the roof while fighting the Obi. Inosuke and Zenitsu ask Tanjiro for help in order to defeat Daki, and agrees asking that they'll finish quickly in order to help the Tengen as well. Hinatsuru tells the boys that she will hide quickly in order to allow them to focus on the battle, and disappears as they face Daki. She gets excited when Tanjiro joins their fight and informs his comrades that they need a fast attack in order to cut her neck. Inosuke realises that she has slowed down and decides to go first to attack, as Zenitsu agrees with Tanjiro to protect him from behind. Inosuke proceeds to dash forward using Beast Breathing 8th Bang Explosive Rush, with Zenitsu and Tanjiro use Thunder Breathing 1st Form Thunderclap and Flash 8th Fold and Water Breathing 3rd Form Glowing Dance respectively to protect Inosuke from the Obi. Daki begins to crack under the pressure as Inosuke closes in on her and manages to draw both of his blades on either side of her neck. Inosuke bruises his heels into the ground as he uses his beast breathing sixth fang palisade bites to effectively decapitate Daki. Tanjiro smiles with joy as he witnesses Inosuke leap and catch Daki's head in the air. Rejoicing at successfully cutting off her head, Inosuke claims that they have to act fast and keep her head separated from her body. Inosuke quickly tries to escape with the head in order to prevent her from reattaching it to her body. He tells the other boys not to worry about him, but to instead help Tengen. But before he can even get to safety, Daki uses his hair to put up resistance. He manages to stop her resistance though, but before he can get away, Guataro appears behind him and impales him through the chest. Tanjiro looks on in horror as Guataro grabs Daki's head while Inosuke collapses to the floor. He then looks down onto the ground and is once again horrified to see the Tengen laying bleeding and unresponsive on the ground. Zenitsu tries to warn Tanjiro of the oncoming Obi attack, but before he can escape, the roof collapses beneath him and Tanjiro falls to the ground, seemingly buried beneath the rubble. As he falls unconscious, he apologizes to everyone, and specifically Nezuko for losing the battle. In his dream, Nezuko can be seen telling him to stop apologizing for any faults in their lives, or feeling unworthy. She reassures him that it isn't his fault that their lives were ruined, and tells him that they'll work together to make a better future for themselves. Nezuko begins to cry as her body morphs from her human form to her demon form as she pleads for him to never apologize for any regrets and tells him she understands how he feels. Tanjiro awakens from his dream and tries to recollect his thoughts, but before he gets up, Guataro can be seen standing over him, questioning if he's still alive. Guataro takes it upon himself to tell Tanjiro that Inosuke was pierced through the heart. Zenitsu was suffering and trapped beneath the rubble, and Tengen's heart had stopped due to the poison. He proceeds to refer to all of them as pathetic, and asks Tanjiro how the demon in the box is related to him, and responds by saying that she is his younger sister. Guataro begins to laugh at Tanjiro's pathetic attempt to protect his younger sister, and tells him he should be using his hands before proceeding to break his fingers. As Tanjiro withers on the ground in pain, Guataru proceeds to berate him for his weaknesses and pulls him by his hair. He teases Tanjiro and tells him to try to decapitate him, but instead of attacking him, he slaps his hand on a small bag and hangs his head down in defeat. Believing that he broke Tanjiro's spirit, he reveals his grand idea of offering Tanjiro the opportunity to become a demon for the sake of his sister. Tanjiro suddenly looks up into the sky, and Guataro asks him if he's been trying to hold back his tears, but to his surprise, Tanjiro responds that he had been preparing for the moment. His face gets close to Guataro's, and Tanjiro brings his head down and headbutts him with a great force, momentarily stunning Guataro. Daki screams at him to get up, but as his legs falter, he looks down to discover that a kunai has been lodged into his leg. He realizes that when Tanjiro had looked down, he had opened a bag given to him by Hinatsuru, which contained wisteria poison. 
Tanjiro manages to stand back up while Guatard remains paralyzed and crouched before him. Tanjiro uses his remaining strength to swing the blade down onto his neck. As he tries to force the blade down and through, Tanjiro envisions himself in Guataro's place, and he thinks that if he were in this situation, he would want his comrade to kill him before he could live as a demon. On a nearby rooftop, Daki can be seen rushing to her feet at the sudden change of events to try and help her brother, but before she can even get close to them, Zenitsu manages to free himself from the rubble. He attacks her using thunder breathing first form thunderclap and flash to bring her attention to him and then uses god speed to attack her neck. Zenitsu pleads with his blade to cut through her neck since he was given the chance to escape the rubble and attack her while Guataro was subdued. Tanjiro continues to struggle to cut through Guataro's neck, but before he can do so, Guataro manages to emit his blood blaze to repel his sword. Tanjiro is knocked off balance as Guataro regains his footing, causing them to re-engage in battle. Guataro gains the upper hand and brings his sickle down on Tanjiro's neck. However, at that moment, Tengen regains his consciousness and protects him from the sickle. Despite being severely poisoned and missing his left hand, Tenkin engages in the head-to-head -head combat with Guataro, while remarking that he's perfected the musical score technique. It is revealed that his technique allows him to analyse manoeuvres of his opponents and read them like notes on a piece of sheet music. However, the poison had hindered his attacking ability, meaning that he can only defend Guataro's attacks. Guataro manages to land a powerful attack to the left side of Tenkin's face, resulting in the loss of his eye, and proceeds to stab Tenkin. Tanjiro yells out to Tengen after witnessing him get stabbed, but Tengen orders him to ignore and jump. Tanjiro leaps into the air towards Guataro and attempts to decapitate him, but is brutally stabbed through the jaw by Guataro's sickle. The demon begins panicking as they gain the upper hand and tries pulsating his poison to kill Tanjiro. However, Tanjiro proceeds to endure through the pain and swings his sword towards Guataro. Tanjiro can be seen swinging his blade down on Guataro's neck, despite the demon's sickle piercing through his jaw. His arm strength isn't enough to slice through his neck, so he resorts to forcing his entire body to push through, ignoring the pain. Guataro notices the change in Tanjiro's scar as he develops a demon slayer mark, and his eyes roll back in his head. The change in his demeanor proves to be too great as Tanjiro's blade cuts through Guataro's neck, causing him to panic. Meanwhile, Daki can be seen resisting Zenitsu's attempt to decapitate her. She tries to use her obi to kill Zenitsu at close range, but Inosuke unexpectedly rushes up, revealing that he protected his heart from being stabbed by rearranging all of his organs. He also reveals that the poison has no effect on him at all since he was raised up in the mountains, before proceeding to assist Zenitsu by decapitating Daki. The three boys let out a roar as they muster out their strength to slice the demon's neck. After the long battle, Zenitsu and Inosuke manage to decapitate Daki up on the rooftop while Tanjiro can be seen decapitating Guataro simultaneously on the ground. The heads fall onto the ground and roll until they end up face to face. As Guataro's body falls onto the ground, Tengen notices something being emitted from it and becomes alarmed. Meanwhile, up on a nearby rooftop, Suma, Hinatsuru, and Makio have arrived to witness the end of the battle. As Makio begins to bicker with Suma over her behavior, Hinatsuru notices something as a mist down on the battlefield. She looks down to see Tanjiro is struggling to breathe as he bleeds out from his jaw while trying to slow down the poison. Tanjiro looks over at Tengen, who's sitting down in front of him and yelling at him with a panicked expression. However, Tanjiro fails to comprehend his sudden alarm as Tengen looks at him with horror. Under the night sky, Nezuko can be seen looking down at her brother with a concerned expression. As Tanjiro begins to regain his consciousness, he looks around to see the destroyed buildings around him. Nezuko nudges her brother as a way of letting him know that she was the one who saved him from the destruction. Tanjiro attempts to get up to search for the others but his legs give out from beneath him and he collapses onto the ground. He hears someone calling out to him in the distance and recognizes the voice as belonging to Zenitsu and is unexpectedly picked up and carried by Nezuko. The pair move towards the source of the commotion and discover Zenitsu has awakened from his slumber, 
not remembering any of the events that had just transpired. He tells Tanjiro that he can hear Inosuke's heartbeat getting weaker and weaker and points to him laying unconscious nearby. The siblings rush over to him and Tanjiro attempts to wake up Inosuke, but to his dismay, he feels his heart getting weaker. Tanjiro begins to panic and thinks of exposing him to sunlight or sending a crow to Shinobu for help, but realises that he doesn't have the time for either options. His tears begin to swell up as Inosuke lays dying before him. But Nezuko nonchalantly comes forward and unexpectedly sets Inosuke on fire. Tanjiro looks amazed as he witnesses Inosuke's poisoned skin heal right before his eyes and his comrade suddenly awakes to announce he's hungry. The three rejoice at the fact that he's okay and embrace as Tanjiro begins to sob. Elsewhere on the battlefield, Suma begins to wail loudly, pleading for Tengen to live after winning the battle. Her co-wife Makio begins to panic as she realises the antidote they administered is not working to remove the poison from his body, and Hinatsuru begins to weep. Realising that he doesn't have much time to live, Tengen begins to relay his final words to his wives, but is interrupted by Suma's loud wails. Makio becomes enraged at Suma's overreactive cries and begins to pull by her hair and shove rocks into her mouth to make her be quiet, while Hinatsuru tries to prevent them from bickering. In a comical fashion though, Tengen sits, spectating at his wives while they continue to bicker during his final moments as he slips away. He then realises that he can no longer move, speak, or do anything due to the poison. But then, everyone momentarily pauses when Nezuko suddenly appears next to Tengen. They proceed to stare at her as she raises her hand and grabs him before setting him on fire. His wives look in horror until Suma comically pulls Nezuko away, saying that it's too soon to cremate him. To their surprise, Tengen begins to speak again and asks how it is possible that the poison has been removed from his body, which brings relief to his wives. Tanjiro subtly explains that Nezuko's blood demon art has somehow managed to remove the poison from their bodies and expresses his relief to know that Tengen is safe. Tengen tries to tell Tanjiro to rest, if not, he will die from his injuries. But Tanjiro informs Tengen that he needs to confirm that the demons have been defeated before he can rest. The siblings proceed throughout the rubble in search of the demons' heads and come across a pool of blood. Tanjiro pulls out an apparatus and decides to collect the blood in order to be studied. Once the blood has been collected, Tamiyo's cat mysteriously appears before Tanjiro, and he puts it in the box to be delivered to Tamiyo. As the siblings continue their search, Tanjiro smells the scent of the demons and guides Nezuko towards them. When they arrive, Guataro and Daki can be seen viciously arguing over their defeat. Their heads begin to disintegrate as they blame each other for losing the battle, with Guataro disregarding Daki for being useless. Daki retaliates by saying that someone as ugly as Guataro cannot be considered her relative, which leaves Tanjiro looking at them concerned about the hurtful words they are spewing at each other. Daki and Guataro continue arguing as their heads begin to disintegrate. She starts chastising her brother for being useless and questions if they are even related. Guataro grows angry at her comments and calls her a weakling, even regretting to protect her in the first place. He loses his temper and goes on to spew hateful remarks such as mentioning that his life would have been better off without her, and wishing that she had never been born, causing Daki's eyes to well up with tears. Tanjiro intervenes and covers Guataro's mouth, saying that he doesn't mean what he is saying, and that they shouldn't spend their final moments with each other arguing. Daki begins to wail at Tanjiro out of frustration, yelling at him to leave them alone and stop lecturing them. Daki's head reaches its last phases of its disintegration as she cries out for her brother to save her, saying that she doesn't want to die. Guataro hopelessly watches as her head dissolves away while still calling out to him, before he impulsively calls out to her by her birth name, Ume. As he reaches his final moments, Guataro recalls his past as a human born in the Kiremise to a prostitute mother. Before she died from syphilis, his mother tried to kill him many times, even after his younger sister was born. Due to his appearance and lack of hygiene, the young Guataro was bullied and detested by everyone that he met. Things began to change though after his sister was born, as her beauty dismissed his inferiority complex, and he used his ugliness plus his newfound fighting skills to become an efficient debt collector. However, 
the good fortune would not last long for the siblings. When Ume turned 13, she blinded a samurai with a comb and was viciously burned and buried alive for her crime. Having been away on his job at the time, Guataru returned to find her barely alive in a hole, and he hugged her body as she clung to life. He cursed the gods to return his sister for treating them cruelly, before he is attacked by the same samurai. The samurai slashes Guataru from behind, and a the manager there brazenly calls Guataru a nuisance and a brute for harassing the locals of the district, before expressing their pity at having lost Ume as a courtesan. Before the samurai could finish him off, Guataru viciously kills the manager and berates the samurai for having a lavish lifestyle, before gruesomely killing him as well. As Guataru tried to find help for him and his sister, no one would help them due to their reputation and circumstances. He trudges on through the street until he ultimately collapses and bleeds out onto the floor as the snow begins to fall. The siblings lay on the floor dying until they are discovered by one of the upper rank demons, who offers to turn them into demons. Guataru adamantably proclaims that he would become a demon again no matter how many times that he is reborn, wanting to always bring fear as Guataro the debt collector. Guataro muses how dark he could have been if he had raised her differently, before taking note of his surroundings. A younger looking darky appeared behind him, disgusted with their current location and wondering where the exit was. The emaciated man ordered her not to follow him anymore, getting angry when she would not comply. A tearful darky apologised for her earlier cruel insults, stating that it was because she had not wanted to accept that it was her fault that they had lost. When Gyotaro still refused to not let her come with, Daki tackled him from behind, stubbornly refusing to ever let go, vowing to always be his little sister no matter how often they are reborn, and finally accepting her company, Gyotaro carries his little sister into the fire that awaits them. In the world of the living, Tanjiro and Nezuko watch as the last of the demon siblings dissolve into the air. Tanjiro wonders if they made up, which Nezuko affirms. Elsewhere, Obanai Iguro attempts to praise Tengen for his defeat of an upper rank 6, but is disappointed to hear that he beat such a low ranking member of the 12 Kazuki, as well as lost his left arm and eye. Tengen states his intention to retire as a Hashira, but Obanai refuses to accept this, as there is already a vacant Hashira position, and the lower ranks of the demon corpse keep on dying without improving. Tengen disagrees with this last point, stating that Tanjiro is definitely improving, while Obanai is surprised that he survived the fight. Elsewhere, Kaguya Yubashiki learns of the group's victory, and is elated, but is stricken by the complications of his illness. He states that his victory will have mass consequences enough to ensure Muzan's defeat within their generation. He then collapses into a continuous bout of coughing. Over at the Infinity Castle, Akaza ponders how his summoning must mean a member of the upper ranks has been defeated. Akaza looks on with displeasure as the Biwa demon plays her instrument and is greeted by one of the upper rank colleagues, Gyoko. The potted demon asks him how he's been after 90 years and proclaims his insincere worry over Akaza being the slain upper rank. Han Tengu corrects his colleague as it had actually been 113 years since they had last been summoned, and expresses his concern over the oddity and the unluckiness of the number. Ignoring them, Akaza asks the Biwa demon if Muzen had arrived, the answer being no, and then if the upper rank 1 had arrived. Before she can answer though, Doma places a hand on Akaza's shoulder, asking him, to show some concern for his well-being as well, as he did not wish to see any of his precious buddies die. Gyoku and Doma exchange a small conversation about Gyoku's pot, and Doma's use of the pot that Gyoku had given him. Akaza demands that Doma remove his hand, viciously punching him when he does not immediately do so. Quickly recovering from the blow, Doma pleasantly asks if Akaza had gotten stronger since they last met, enraging the tattooed demon. The Biwa demon finally relates that the upper rank one had been the first to arrive, surprising Akaza, who spotted his silent colleague. Kokoshibo noted that he was present as was their master. As each upper rank reacted to the silent arrival of their leader, Muzan noted that Gyotaro was dead. Doma apologised for Gyotaro's failure, wondering what punishment Muzan would give him. 
but the ancient demon declined all of his suggestions, having already anticipated the upper rank six defeat. He further commented that he did not expect anything from him, which Doma questioned, as he did not believe that he had ever failed to live up to his master's expectations. But Muzan countered by stating that the Ubayashiki family had yet to be killed, and the blue spider lily had yet to be found, making him question why the upper ranks even exist. Each of the upper ranks offers some excuse for this failure, save Akaza and Gyoko. The latter offers Muzan some information that he claims will get him closer to achieving his goals. Swiftly beheading the upper rank, Muzan berates Gyoko for speaking of change, as he is only looking for permanence. He adds that he is at the height of his displeasure due to an upper rank being killed for the first time in over 100 years, further berating Gyoko for attempting to give him unconfirmed information. He demands that the upper rank serve him with suicidal devotion from that moment on. He then orders Gyoko to head over with Han Tengu to see if he can confirm this information, and then leaves. Doma then approaches Gyoku, asking to join him on his mission, and then, in an instant, has the upper portion of his head completely destroyed by Akaza. Akaza, the upper rank 3 demon, orders him to get lost as Muzan had not given him any specific orders. Akaza looks in disbelief as his arm is sliced off by Kokushibo. Doma attempts to defend his subordinate, but Kokushibo reprimands Akaza for his actions as they soil the relationships between the upper ranks, advising him to battle Doma for his spot as upper rank 2 instead if he is truly bothered. After hearing the suggestion, Doma interrupts and asserts that Akaza wouldn't be able to raise his rank given how much more powerful he was despite becoming a demon much later than him, a fact that likely contributed to Akaza's rage. He continues on describing how he allowed Akaza to use violence on him as a way to get along with him. Kokushibo ignores Doma and asks Akaza if he understood what he meant. Akaza confirms, declaring that he would definitely defeat him one day, receiving a word of good luck from his superior as he leaves the fortress. Doma tries to start a conversation with Akaza, but he ignores him as he exits. Gyoko then asks Nakaime to send him and Han Tengu to their next destination, in which the Biwa demon complies to. She additionally sends Doma back to his cult when he tries to talk to her, after which he mopes over his colleague's unfriendliness. Somewhere else, a man is seen sitting by a house with another individual. Sumiyoshi brings him tea and some food. The man thanks his friend for the hospitality in which the latter apologises for his wife being asleep and the child having to be babysat by a guest. He tells him not to worry about the situation and that he shouldn't continue receiving the meals for free from his friend. Sumiyoshi denies this, revealing that his family was saved by him and their lives were thanks to him. He also offers to pass down his guest's tale as he didn't have any successes, even if his family were just simple coal burners. Sumiyoshi is gently turned down by his friend as he states that his heritage will find its way back itself and that no matter what, it will return. He then says that despite Sumiyoshi viewing him as powerful, he was unable to protect what was important to him and had little worth. Tanjiro internally begs the man to not think of himself like that and cries as he wakes up from the dream, heavily bandaged and hooked up to multiple IVs. He tries to figure out where he is and is suddenly interrupted by a falling vase. Kano stands in shock in the doorway and reveals that Tanjiro had been unconscious for two months, tearfully stating that she's glad he's awake. So, well, that finally brings us to the very end of the Entertainment District arc from the one and only Demon Slayer. This arc really is something else. Out of what I've read from Kimetsu no Yaiba, this arc is definitely my favourite, which is why I've decided to start here when it comes to covering the entire Demon Slayer story. It's absolutely awesome to see how much an improvement all three of the young Demon Slayers have, especially Zenitsu, throughout this entire arc here. Seeing how he was used as comedic relief in the manga was absolutely hilarious. Like when he gets left on the street by Tengen and we find him jamming out in the middle of, I can't remember what house it is, but with his Shamison, I think that's just absolutely hilarious and I love it compared to his like anime version of Zenitsu which I find almost like 
a little bit more annoying. So I, I love the, the comparison that we get from anime to, to manga Zenitsu here. I, th- I find him a lot better. So I hope the, uh, the anime does take that kind of like take with Zenitsu and we do see a more of like the, the funnier side of him this arc. This part of the manga takes place from chapter 70 and goes all the way up to chapter 99 if you guys are interested in starting this story and reading like throughout the manga and all that kind of stuff. So if you do want to start from after this video, then chapter 100 would be like a good spot for you guys to start from. But if not, like I do still recommend that you guys read throughout the entire arc just in case I've missed like a thing here or there that you might find as like vital information later on throughout the entire story and uh, I might have just missed it. If you have enjoyed this video though, then do feel free to hit that subscribe button and also be sure to leave a like on the video as it really helps out with the algorithm and pushes my stuff to a bunch of new amazing people. Plus, I put a bunch of work into these uh, like longer explained videos, especially this one. Over the last three weeks, I've put a ton of work into like editing this video and getting it out like on time and I kept having to push things back, but here it is now. So if you guys could uh, hit that subscribe button, I would really, really appreciate it. I've also got some merch if you guys are interested, which I will leave a link to like it down below along with like my Patreon and all my like Discord and that kind of stuff if you guys do want to join or, or look at all that kind of stuff. But anyway, for now it's been your professional degenerate, Diavolo, and I'll see you all in a bit. Bye.